Section 1. The Philosophy of Vanu The basic principle which leads a libertarian from statism to a free society is the same that the founders of libertarianism used to discover the theory itself. That principle is consistency. Samuel Edward Conkin III, New Libertarian Manifesto Chapter 1. Vanu, A Brief History and Introduction since humans have existed on this earth, coercion has been used to control, manipulate, and exploit individuals. It is an unfortunate fact of history. The state uses it to keep their hapless citizenry in line, and private criminals use it to violate the autonomy of their subjects for personal gain. So then, what is politics? Politics is the art and science of managing centralized coercion. Plain and simple. That being said, it is no surprise that politics is undoubtedly a counterintuitive way to decrease the amount of coercion in your life. Would you drink a fifth of Jack Daniels to cure your alcoholism? Engage a couple more prostitutes to assist you in overcoming your sex addiction? What about making a few trips to Vegas as the means for eradicating that dreaded gambling vice? As ridiculous as those may sound, using politics to alleviate coercion is a far more dangerous utilization of this failed logic. It has far more far-reaching, unintended, and intended consequences. People's livelihoods have been and can be destroyed by so-called public policy, the state being the apparatus it is, mass murder, i.e. democide, the most deadly form of coercion is always on the table. Thus. The problem that freedom pioneers face is coercion. Back in the 1960s, a man named Tom Marshall Rayo resided in Southern California, then a bustling libertarian community. He was a techie engineer, a socially awkward fellow, a marijuana smoker, not much of a philosopher, but a freedom-seeking libertarian nonetheless. Early on, he spent some time at the Nathaniel Brandon Institute, a school teaching the objectivist philosophy laid out by Ayn Rand. Well, at its core, first by Aristotle, until his first major venture came about, the Free Isles Project. The Free Isles Project spawned out of the Preform Inform zine. The goal was to conduct research in the efficacy of setting up a new libertarian nation and the seemingly endless possibilities for freedom if it were to come into fruition. Rayo said the Free Isle resident would, hypothetically, have all of the advantages of participating in a world commerce while being free from taxes and regulations. Furthermore, a free isle, if it were successful, could be a very effective demonstration of the merits of laissez-faire capitalism. Unfortunately, or fortunately, it was never successful. Hell, it never even got past the talking stage. Eventually, the movement subsided after disagreements rose regarding the size and scope of government, the lack of individuals willing to become involved, and the potential ramifications from existing nation-states. As an aside, the latter two are still big problems for libertarian country-building projects today. Thankfully, most of the newer projects are more anarchistic. But the facilitators are often terrible strategists and tacticians. Generally, they fail to learn from history. Rayo, frustrated with the all-talk, no-action libertarians of his day, said, Screw it! and moved out of his apartment into a camper mounted on his pickup truck. He became a van nomad and began laying the foundation for the most interesting, plausible freedom strategy today. Naturally, though, freedom means many different things to different people. Freedom, to a propertarian anarchist, means private property, personal autonomy, and peace. Freedom to a leftist means free health care, free college, and a massive welfare state. Freedom to a conservative means Christianity. It's not really Christianity. Jesus was most certainly an anarchist. The mass murder known as war and socialist insecurity. Language is quite fluid, which is why Rayo and Roberto, his free mate, proposed a new term, Vanu. Vanu is an awkward contraction of the words voluntary, not vulnerable and, simply defined, is the condition or quality of, as well as the action of achieving an invulnerability to coercion. So, with one definition, Vanuans avoid the issue of subjective interpretation altogether. You know coercion and violence when you see it. If you make radical lifestyle changes in an attempt to avoid those things, you are a Vanuan. 
as you are taking steps to become more invulnerable to coercion, regardless of whether the perceived threat is corporations, the state, or a crime-ridden hellhole. But early Vanuans also had interesting ways of interpreting liberty and freedom. Liberty, as defined by Funk and Wagnall's Standard College Dictionary of 1968, the reference Rayo used in his book, is a measure of freedom within restraints, granted by or through a sovereign power. Freedom, as defined by the aforementioned source, is the widest term, suggesting complete absence of restraint. So, Vanuans say that liberty is the general exemption from coercion and freedom is an absence of coercion. To gain liberty, one utilizes legal intercises, or, as it is more vernacularly known, legal loopholes within the law. And you know what the state does to those, right? If they can, they close them. Damn those gun show loopholes and ghost gunners. Major props to Cody Wilson. Rayo specifically had an interesting take on legal intercises. One of his complaints about van nomadism was that it required reliance on slave tags, i.e. driver's licenses, registration, mandatory insurance, and so on. So, in order to hopefully avoid the coercion of the bludgies, you have a license plate on your car. You hand the bludgies your driver's license, and you keep your tags up to date. It's providing a safeguard of sorts, but the terms and conditions may change if they smell marijuana or if the bludgie in question just wanted to beat you for breathing the wrong way. Rail also had a quite negative stance on utopian fantasies like Ancapistan, a free world, or a communist paradise. Therefore, freedom, the absence of coercion, is a utopian pipe dream. Even if the state disappears, there will be psychopaths, violent murderers, and thieves. Hence, there will always be coercion. He pursued the van nomad lifestyle for quite a while and realized that it wasn't enough for him. He disliked the aforementioned slave tags because if you have to ask and pay off the state for permission, are you really free? So, Rayo decided that the wilderness Vanu life would offer him the most personal satisfaction, and he and Roberta moved into a polyethylene A-tent deep in the Siskiyou National Forest. He continued to publish a few Vanu publications, Preform Inform, Innovator, Vanu Life, and wrote for others, such as the Libertarian Connections, the Eleutherian Forum, and Going Mobile, nestled up in his foam hut under his makeshift tent. His frustration with libertarians and the community at large increased, and all he saw around him were controlled schizophrenic political crusaders. See below. He once longed for Vanu associations, i.e. van nomad mobile communities, agoras, but his inclinations to work with others waned like a recent full moon. As I receive more Vanu publications from his time, I hope to find out what really happened. At this time, all I have is suspicion. He began to peruse troglodyte living and practiced building underground structures when he mysteriously ceased communication and disappeared. All that remains is a portion of a letter he wrote to his correspondent, I think John Fisher, the editor of his first book, dated February 14th, 1974. My thinking has undergone major changes in the last several months on interfacing, alternate economics, interrelations in general. I, too, am becoming very dubious as to the value of all libertarian club involvements. We do not intend to use the libertarian club in the future as an avenue for gaining non-anonymous friends or associates. But the strategy he and other freedom seekers pioneered is still just as efficacious as it was before, and even more so thanks to advancements in technology. So how does Vanu differ from direct action more generally, such as methods listed on the freedom umbrella of direct action? FUDA? Well, with many of the strategies on the FUDA, you can more or less continue living the same lifestyle you did before, i.e. a 9-to-5 job in the servile society, paying some taxes, etc., and receive some increases in your personal freedom. Vanu, on the other hand, is a lifestyle change. It is a reorganization of your entire life. But the increase in personal freedom is quite substantial, and that's putting it mildly. Examples of these Vanu lifestyles include Van Nomadism and Wilderness Vanu, both strategies Rayo and Roberta utilized. Minimalist sailboating, intentional communities, mobile or stationary, Vanuing in cities, perpetual traveling and utilizing ethical enclaves. I'll discuss all of these in substantial depth below, but first, let's take a look at the few honorable mentions of Vanu by other libertarians. <laughs> 